G'day, just got back from dumpster surfing and boy did I find some gems, some action figures. This is from the old TV show, Star Trek The Voyager. I've been listening to these two guys, um, Lieutenant Tom Paris and Ensign Harry Kim. Well, not the characters, the actors. Robbie Duncan McNeil and Garrett Wong. They host a very cool podcast called The Delta Flyers. Um, I've been binge listening to them all summer or winter, depending on which hemisphere you're in. Um, it's great. It's like listening to two old friends. They've never met me, but, you know, from listening to them in the podcast, you kind of remember the seven years you watched them on Star Trek Voyager. Good blokes. But yeah, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We'll talk about the Delta Flyers podcast in a second. But let's go through all of these great action figures that someone just throw away. Maybe they thought they were getting Star Trek Next Generation action figures. We have Jacote, Jacote, Chuckles, The Voyager. This is him in his marquee uniform. I wish he would have stayed in it with the extra marquees. Um, Star Trek Voyager begins with Voyager and the marquee ship going to the Badlands and vanishing into the Delta Quadrant, 70,000 light years away from Earth. Um, they were very quick to adopt the Starfleet uniform. I think it would have been better if it was a mismatch of Marquis and Starfleet working together. And visually, that would have been good to keep their own costumes. Great actor, Robert Beltran. Very underrated. We have Balana in her original Klingon. Actually, this is from an episode called Faces where they extracted her Klingon DNA into two life forms, one human, one full Klingon. Then we have Commander Jonathan Devon Ford. Oh, from Sequest DSV. Well, I think Garrett said he was an extra on this. <laughs> Kess, the Ocumpan. Now this is where we get into some voodoo doll stuff. Um, the card that's in here, I don't know if this is original to the box, but it, it contains a bit of her clothing worn by the actress Jennifer Leon. A piece of material. Um, feels very soft not unlike the character herself. The women of Star Trek. Congratulations, this card contains an authentic piece of costume material worn by Jennifer Leon as Kess on Star Trek Voyager. This material, this substance was once on board the Starship Voyager. And now it's here in my boat shed. Well, this brings an element of class to things. I think we'll hang on to this. Of course, it might just be a bit of carpet that someone found on the ground. Well, we might as well continue the unboxing now. Great actress, uh, Jennifer Leon. She left the show at the beginning of season three, though, unfortunately. I think she's got into some drama in real life that they don't talk about on the Delta Flyers podcast. Good. Classy gentleman. Who's up next? Kazon. Now, these were the first enemies at the beginning of Star Trek Voyager. Um, very Klingon-esque in their ridges on their head. They were kind of warlike. Um, they lived on like a sand planet and they didn't have any water 
water was the most valuable thing for these guys, which reminded me of like a post-apocalyptic Mad Max kind of world, and that's what Voyager really needed to be a part of. They should have kept these guys, should have had battles with them, trading water for um, maps and things, kind of like 24th century pirates. I think there's a lot of promise here. In fact, this action figure looks great. And we could use some more 1990s air in here. So, ready to breathe in some air from 1995? I sure am. It's decreased in value significantly. Kazon Soldier. Can you imagine a toy commercial with a kid playing with him on the beach? I think he's a good villain. Speaking of good villains, last but not least, the Vidians. Uh, they had a plague, not unlike the recent epidemic that humankind went through in the year 2019 slash 20. Um, but they needed to harvest organs from other species in order to survive. These guys were chilling. So whereas the Kazon were like the Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome enemy, these guys were like the more scientific, intelligent, um, advanced race, but with a deadly disease that they had to use other races, forced to, in order to survive. But Voyager didn't keep these villains for long either. And by the time we get to season three, it's pretty much just the Borg show. But back to Ensign Harry Kim, played by Garrett Wong, and Lieutenant Tom Paris. Now their podcast is great, the Delta Flyers. In the very first episode, they go into how, believe it or not, Kate Mulgrew was not the first actress to play Captain Catherine Janeway. It was a French-Canadian lady, and she didn't fit in at all. Um, Harry even tried to find out what was going on with her. I mean, Garrett did. Um, they have great insight into all the episodes. Very interesting stuff. Um, for the episode Tattoo, they actually call Robert Bacardo, the doctor, while he was riding a bicycle to answer a random question they had, which caused him to fall off his bike and injure himself. Great audio for podcasts. I mean, what other podcast has stars calling each other and injuring them? <laughs> Garrett is such a great um, voiceover artist, if you can call it that, a great narrator. I could listen to him for hours. Great stories, great perspective. At the end of the episode, Non Sequitur, he says the meaning of that episode is pretty much It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. Whereas if you think that you're useless and unwanted and have not made a difference at all in the world, be prepared to see yourself taken out of it. And you'd be surprised with how many people you've touched. And I think we all can like shed a tear at that inspiring quote. Well, should we unbox Harry? We should. Never made lieutenant. Tom Paris's turn. Robert Duncan McNeil was originally in a next gen episode called The First Duty. First Judy? Um, he played a character called Nick Lacano, very similar to Tom Paris, but I think they wanted to save money on copyright, so they had to rename him so they wouldn't have to pay some poor writer who invented him. Allegedly. Awesome. The Delta Flyers podcast. Check it out. They're almost at the last episode. They're already reached season seven. Um, can I get a shout out, blokes? No? Oh, okay. Let's put them over here. Well, there you have it. Go dumpster diving, you never know what you may find. Actually, I had an ulterior motive 
for trying to find a Tom Paris action figure. You see, I needed to complete my Masters of the Universe He-Man collection. And Robert Duncan McNeil was in the film. He played Kevin. And <laughs> Kevin and Grildor had a great scene. So, sorry Harry. Grildor asked Kevin if he remembers the music to open up the cosmic key tunes. And then they all stare at um, Kevin. And Kevin says, You've got the wrong song maker, Grildor. I'm just a stupid keyboard player in a high school band. There's a million of me. But then Grildor gets up, approaches the camera, and says, only one of you, Kevin. Only one of anybody. Now, if that's not the greatest quote in cinematic history, I don't know what is. We are all unique. And there is only one of you, there's only one of me. Unless... The Vidians extract your DNA and split you into two. But what's the likelihood of that happening?